Before we get into the nuts and bolts, let's cover off on a few of the basics. All the main browsers have an incognito mode. On Chrome, Safari and Edge, you can press Command, Shift and N on a Mac or Control, Shift and N on Windows to open a new private window. On Firefox, it's Command or Control, Shift and P. Alternatively, all browsers will let you open a new private window from the menu, which you'll find here on Safari, but here on all other browsers. Mobile browsers also offer incognito mode. Regardless of whether you're on an iPhone or Android, a long press on the tab icon should give you the option. Chrome even goes as far as to list the benefits of browsing in incognito mode. And this list is the same for all browsers. The sites you visit won't be saved to your browsing history, cookies will be removed after you close the window, and any information you enter into a form, such as a username, will not be cached. Where this works well is say on a family computer or iPad where everyone just logs in using the same account. So when Granny jumps on the iPad to play Sudoku, she won't get a nasty surprise when she sees what you've been up to. But let's be honest, this isn't a common scenario. These days even kids and grandparents have their own personal devices. And when it comes to online privacy, it's probably not a family member that you need to be worried about. If you're serious about being anonymous online, then incognito mode isn't going to protect you. And to be fair to Chrome, as well as listing the benefits, it also tells you a few of the things that incognito mode won't do. For example, it doesn't stop the actual website you're visiting from logging your activity, such as your browser that you're using and the IP address that you use to make the connection. This exact same information may also be collected by your internet provider or the owner of the Wi-Fi connection that you're using, whether that be your work, school, or local coffee shop. Then of course, there's all those other scripts that run on websites so that companies can guarantee you see the ads that they want you to see. Browsing in an incognito mode doesn't prevent these scripts from running either. So if incognito mode isn't sufficient at protecting your anonymity online, then what else can you do? Well, luckily there are several options, and what's more, they're all free. And first up is to keep using incognito mode because as Chrome highlights, it does have several benefits. Next is to use a browser whose primary aim is to protect your privacy. And my recommendation for this is Brave, which I've talked about in previous videos. Out of the box, Brave does things like automatically preventing all those nasty trackers from running. In fact, Brave is so centered around protecting your privacy and anonymity online, they've even added Tor to their incognito mode, which without getting too technical about it, reroutes your internet traffic to hide your activity. Brave is available on desktop and mobile. If the idea of changing your browser sounds like too much of an inconvenience, then at least install the DuckDuckGo Essentials extension which blocks nasty trackers in the same way that Brave does. Click on the menu icon in the top right corner of your browser, choose More and Extensions, or in Firefox, it's Add-ons and Themes. Find DuckDuckGo Privacy Essentials and install it. Once installed, be sure to allow it to run in incognito mode. It's also available in Safari on Mac. Click on Safari in the menu, choose Safari Extensions and search for DuckDuckGo Privacy Essentials. Sadly, the same extension doesn't exist on Safari for iPhone or iPad, but Apple does make an effort to block nasty trackers, ironically using the same list created by DuckDuckGo. Having made a best effort to protect yourself from trackers, the next step is to encrypt your DNS traffic and switch to using a DNS provider that doesn't log your activity. Again, without trying to get too technical, DNS is simply a mechanism for matching a website's name to its IP address. We access a website by typing in the name, say facebook.com. However, your browser can only get to Facebook by knowing Facebook's IP address. DNS is simply the service that looks up and converts the name into the IP address. This conversion is usually performed by your internet provider, for example, AT&T, who may log all of your requests, essentially compiling a complete history of all the sites you visited. What's more, your DNS requests may be sent unencrypted in plain text, meaning anyone with a bit of nous can see the sites you're visiting. To overcome this whopping privacy flaw, many browsers now offer the option of using an alternative DNS provider. One who doesn't log your requests 
and encrypts the traffic. In Chrome and Brave, you can find the option in Settings under the Privacy and Security tab. Click on Security and then scroll down to use Secure DNS. Enable the option and choose an alternative provider from the list. Whilst you're there, it's also a good idea to enable Always Use Secure Connections as well. In Firefox, you'll find the option under General, then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page under Network Settings and click on Settings. There, you can again enable the option to choose an alternative provider from the list. For Safari users on Mac, unfortunately, it's not so easy. If you want to change your DNS provider, you do so from Network Settings in System Preferences. Under the Advanced option for each internet connection, you have a DNS tab. Here you can see I've set mine to use Cloudflare. There also doesn't appear to be an option to enforce encryption, which is something to bear in mind. If you have an iPhone or iPad, you can change your DNS settings for individual Wi-Fi connections by clicking on the information icon and choosing Configure DNS. But there doesn't appear to be the same option for cellular networks. Android users, all you need to do is open settings, choose network and internet, and there at the bottom of the screen is the option to enable private DNS. Of course, everything we've discussed so far assumes you're accessing the internet via a browser, but it doesn't take into consideration your internet access via apps. If you want to get really serious about protecting your privacy, regardless of whether you're accessing the internet from a browser or an app, you should consider using a VPN. There are some excellent free VPN options, and last year I did a video explaining why I use ProtonVPN and why it's my number one choice. You can use ProtonVPN for free on both desktop and mobile, without ads and without any data caps. And you can be sure that they won't log any of your activity. So there are my recommendations for improving your anonymity and privacy online. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hitting subscribe for lots more of the same. And you might be also interested in finding out my top five security apps or how you can read articles behind a paywall for free. Until next time, my name is Anthony. Thank you very much for watching.